Good morning. Sunday has come, thank God. And this Sunday we are observing as the 11th Sunday after Trinity. And we'll follow the order of worship today that you'll find in your service order. For those of you that might like to follow along with the lines of music, uh, the service is found on page 109 and following in the front portion of your hymn book. Today's service is the service of matins. Our service begins with the confession of sin and the announcement of our God's forgiveness. The congregation is invited, please, to rise. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of God, our Heavenly Father, to render thanks for the great benefits we have received at His hand, to set forth His most worthy praise, to hear His holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and salvation. O oh, come, let us worship Him. Let us kneel and bow down before Him. Let us confess our sins with penitent hearts and obtain forgiveness by His infinite grace and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have strayed from Your ways like lost sheep. We have followed the devices and desires of our hearts. We have offended against your holy law. We have done those things which we should not have done, and we have not done those things which we should have done. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Spare us and restore us according to the promises you have declared to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord, for his sake, Grant that we may live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of God's word, I announce the grace of God to each of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Hymn 111, verses 1, 2, and 4.
O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, forevermore. Amen. Oh, come, let us worship the Lord. For he is our maker. Oh, come, let us sing to the The psalmody for today, selected verses from Psalm 68. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitation. God sets the solitary in families. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those who proclaimed it. You have ascended on high. You have led captivity captive. You have received gifts among men. Ascribe strength to God. His excellence is over Israel and his strength is in the clouds. Here the epistle lesson appointed for this Sunday written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and we read there verses 1 through 10. It's written, now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you believed in vain, or unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the 12. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. And then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. 
And last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Here ends the epistle lesson. Please rise and honor the gospel of our Lord Jesus. The Holy Gospel for the 11th Sunday after Trinity is written in the gospel according to St. Luke in the 18th chapter. We read there verses 9 through 14 in Jesus' name. And these verses will also serve as the basis for our sermon this morning. It's written. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. The tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you that this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to you, O Lord. Please be seated. Hymn 455.
we pray. O Almighty God, most merciful Father, for Jesus' sake and in Him, Him alone, show mercy to us. Bless us by your grace to take heart, to be encouraged, and to be built up and helped. Grant us your joy and peace, and to that end, most merciful God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. God, our rock and our redeemer, amen. In the name of Jesus, grace to you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The Lord Jesus taught in parables, and the parable that we heard this morning, or the story that our Lord Jesus told, is two men went up into the temple to pray. And so far, no difference. Both are men. Both go to the same place, and both go to do the same thing. And it's a religious thing that at a time set for prayer, they might appear before God. But both Christ and, and we too will begin to see a difference between these two. We'll see a difference between these two men in the end. And that, to start with, ought to warn us against using religion as a veneer, a, a, a cloak for evil or for fooling what the world or ourselves or heaven forbid, God. How you live matters as, as does how you believe. And so it says, look carefully how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise in Ephesians 5. And St. James writes, if anyone thinks he is religious, but does not bridle his tongue, he deceives his heart, and that person's religion is worthless. The religion that is pure and undefiled is this, before God the Father, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. What you believe and how you live, they both matter. And to think otherwise is to think that God doesn't mean his word, his words of law and his words of gospel. But he does. And so he has given us a house to call to repentance and to present you with the object of your faith, along with every encouragement and every instruction and every comfort. And so to God's house, the house of old, the Pharisee and the tax collector come. We come to God's house too. We notice the Pharisee and the tax collector and we begin now to notice differences between them. Believe it or not, the Pharisee back then suggested respectability. It suggested piety. It suggested a righteous life. And I don't know if we have anything in our day that comes close or carries the same weight. But if you've ever said, my mother is a saint, I think that kind of gets close to it. tax collector, that suggests treason, dishonesty, theft, an impious and unrighteous life. And I don't know, maybe modern tax man approaches this or snake oil salesman, but if you've ever watched a video, never watched a video online where someone frustrates a con man on the phone as he's trying to get someone's grandma to send Target gift cards to him, otherwise she's going to go to jail? I think that gets close. But one of these two sits apart for a different reason. Pharisee, by the way, means set apart. Did you know that? The Pharisees took religion seriously. And so the Pharisee, he, he sets apart 
And he does these things, and so he's quick to say so, fasting and tithing along with his praying. But the other man, he also sits apart by himself, but at a distance, and he looks down. And well, shouldn't he? And wouldn't you? And finally, as they start praying, these two, and their words are different, they start exposing a difference in their heart and what's happening in there. Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men. And who could argue with that? He's a Pharisee. He's set apart. Look at his life. But, but, are you sure? And what do you mean you're not like other men? Who says you're not? They're men. So are you. They're mortal. So are you. And they are accountable for things that they do, just like you. And the truth of the matter is those differences that seem so important to us, they melt away. One person hoards money while another person burns through it. And each one judges the other, but at the same time, each one is serving themselves. And they fulfill what it says in Psalm 53. They have all fallen away. Together they have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. In the name of Jesus, God forgives you. Jesus has taken away all of your sins. That's saving grace. And, and now from our Lord, we are learning these wonderful words from him. Words that are all about gathering in and receiving together from him. We are learning words like us and we and our, as in our Father. Words that we receive from him. Give us our daily bread and lead us not into temptation, but forgive us. And Lord, have mercy upon us until that day when finally, once and for all, Lord, deliver us from evil. What a wonderful gathering in and what a wonderful, beautiful, lovely inclusion, a glorious inclusion of you. And if you hear these words, then you are included in us and we and our. For you are all men. As in, God would have all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. You are in the world, as in, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And Jesus told this parable he told it to people harboring a twofold, a double problem in their hearts. I don't know if you heard it. But some trusted in themselves that they were righteousness and also treated others with contempt. You see, the world knows one kind of goodness, but God knows another. And you don't want to mistake the Pharisee that we read about in this text did mistake them. And he prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners and unjust and adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give tithes of all that I get. Finally, some people will disagree with God's prerogative that makes him the judge. Some will disagree with him about the seriousness of sin, especially when it's hiding behind that veneer of piety. Some will disagree with God over the value that he places on the humanity of others. But who does that? But what does it say? Forgive. 
trespasses. And because it's that way, it says also, Lord, have mercy on me. That word reaches your ears and your heart and it gathers you in because sin would finally separate you and isolate you. But Jesus blesses the poor in spirit and the sorrowful who have nothing and bring broken hearts to him. For just this reason that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. He wounds so that he might heal and he kills so that he might make alive. He humbles you so as to lift you up. And so he shows you the tax collector so that you can, you can stand with him. The tax collector stood far off and he, and he couldn't even muster it to lift his eyes to heaven, but he beat his breast, an expression of a deep heartfelt sorrow, contrition, faith. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. So find that you have sin, whether by disobedience or by pride. Don't add insult to injury by trying to bear it yourself. The tax collector standing there in the temple, he looked beyond himself to the sacrifice that was taking place there in God's house, and by that, he took heart and he dared to ask God for mercy. God be merciful to me, a sinner, and God provided. And by the words that he said, he set his seal, that, that sinful guy, but set his seal on it that God is true and that God is faithful. God be merciful to me, a sinner. He was looking to the merits of Jesus and the sacrifice that he was going to make, just like you do. For we are Jesus' sin, and he laid down his life for us and for our salvation, for you. And through faith, you too, you go home justified. Righteous not because you did it, but because he spoke it and spoke it over you. And you are learning to pray continually. Forgive me my sins and help me. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Please rise. And we'll join together in singing our next hymn, hymn number 65. We sing verses 1 and 2 uh, as we receive our offering.
O Lord God, merciful Father, we beseech you so to guide and direct us by your Holy Spirit and according to your word, that we may not forget our sins and so be filled with pride, but continue in daily repentance and renewal, finding comfort only in the blessed knowledge that you will be merciful to us, that you forgive our sins, and that you grant us eternal life through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In his name we come before you, gracious Father, and ask for your help and blessing for all of those in need. We pray for your servant, Al Schlusner, who is in Ohio and has suffered an apparent stroke. We ask your blessing and your help for him. Uh, continued healing for his body. We give you thanks that he is home from the hospital. And we ask that you provide for him uh, and continue to comfort him with your words and promises. Be with your servant, Tim Hartigan, who is hospitalized today also with a fever and apparent infection. We pray that you would grant help and healing to him and restore and strengthen him in body and sustain him in heart and mind and preserve and build up his faith. Even so, Heavenly Father, pray that you would be with and bless and help this congregation that you bought with a great price, that you would cause your word to, to pervade our homes and enter deeply into our hearts and return to you again in prayer and praise and thanksgiving. And, and bless us also to make confident and joyful confession of your truth. Sustain and build up your church, we pray, and bless our nation that we might enjoy a time of peace under good leadership and that in our time of peace, your word will accomplish its good purpose. Heavenly Father, please hear us in all our prayers and bless and sustain us in your name and for your mercy's sake. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the canticle Te Deum Laudamus, page four in your bulletin.
please rise. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that of your boundless grace, for the sake of your Son, you have given us the Holy Gospel and have instituted the Holy Sacraments, that through them we may have comfort and forgiveness of all our sins. We beseech you, grant us your Holy Spirit that we believe your word and through the holy sacraments day by day establish our faith until at last we obtain eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Please be seated for our final hymn in 451, verses 1, 2, and 3.
Once again, everyone, good morning. It is so good to see all of you here this morning. I want to thank you for the chance to be here with you in God's house. And God bless you by all the things that you've heard and received from the dear Lord Jesus today. Just a couple of things to bring to your attention as we come to the end of the service. The first thing is, is I'll remind you once again about uh, the back page of your bulletin, the congregation praise. It's something you take and use for devotions in your home. You can modify it however you like. The page right before that, you'll find the announcements for what's going on here at Redeemer this week. So first of all, uh, after our worship service lets out, everybody is invited down to the parish hall to have some refreshments and some time to visit with one another. I hope that you'll take advantage of that. Uh, And Sunday school and adult Bible study is scheduled to get started right about at 1030 today. On Tuesday, uh, there is a leadership meeting scheduled at the Muth's home at 630. And on Thursday, there's uh, our virtual Bible class on Skype at 7 p.m. Come next Sunday, God willing, the divine service again at 9 o'clock. And uh, Ladies Guild is back on the schedule for this month for, for next week. Does that sound right, Carol? Does that sound good? Okay. So, and then, uh, and then Sunday school and adult Bible study course at the usual time. So those are the things that I have for announcements right now, right now unless there's anything that may have been forgotten or needs to be announced yet. Okay. Um, let me make sure to mention this. I do have something else, come to think of it. Um, I have uh, this sign-up sheet. Uh, last week, we got started doing uh, 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 a visit to uh, every member household. I would like to say thanks to the congregation for so much warmth and hospitality. Thank you for, for welcoming me into your homes. Uh, I'm delivering uh, the new uh, directory uh, to our, our households. And so I want to say thanks to everybody that I've had the chance to see so far. If I haven't had the chance to see you yet, uh, there's an opportunity here to sign up. And I'll put this in the narthex. And then afterwards, I'll bring it down to the parish hall if anybody would like to sign up uh, for, for a visit, uh, you know, sometime during the course of this week. Okay? And so please do take advantage of that. And, uh, and I look forward to bringing your directories out to you. It's a lovely opportunity for me to bring you something and, and then have the chance to visit with you a little bit and, and, and ask whatever questions you might have and share with me whatever your thoughts might be. So I hope you'll take advantage of it again. So, um, and that's everything, everybody. Uh, and uh, so uh, God be with and bless all of you until we meet again. Please look for this. God be with and bless all of you until we meet again. And God grant it. I'll see you Sunday.